doing a deep dive into interviewing you today. I didn't understand quite how tough it had been for you guys and how vocal and amazing you've been at letting the world know, hey, I know you all think we're absolutely nailing life here and making millions, but we ain't. Uh, in fact, we got a bit of audio here that I'd only heard for the first time of you speaking about that. I think you'll be able to hear it if we can play it now, Jess. We are the biggest selling female group ever. 10 million albums. Worldwide, we have worked very hard, and we are broke as broke can be. And we're not like trying to be a sad story. If that was the case, we would have been on everybody's talk show talking about how broke we are. We haven't done that. I know it's hard to believe because we've sold so many albums. I mean, how do you feel when you hear yourself back talking about that? Um, it's still, it's still irritating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was the attitude, look, the attitude we had that day, we still be like, yeah, it's, you know? it's true. Yeah. And it was funny because, I mean, it was, it was a night at the Grammys. Mm -hmm. It was a great night for us. And so that's all you're, you're seeing that. And then to hear us say, we don't have anything to show for what you guys are seeing was like, wait a minute, what, you know? And mm -hmm. so. And, and, you know, we upset the record labels because obviously they don't want that kind of information out. But, I mean, it's our truth. It is what it is, you know. And so thank the Lord that we did, you know, always, we always spoke our mind. Then today, I mean, we're, we're, that's just how we are, you know. And so, and being that vocal and all that kind of stuff, I mean, we, we basically took matters in our own hands. hands. Yeah. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> You know, you know what? We even like if you look at the posters of Waterfall, we even had our pockets out. Like the, the like, cartoon version. Yeah, the, the cartoon animated. version. Yeah. You see that? We subliminally, subliminally, yeah. that's the word I'm trying to say, <laughs> put stuff like that everywhere. Cause like the assistant, you remember Volvo, the car or whatever, it's supposed to kind of be like a, a a luxury, like a binge or something assistants were driving Mercedes and, and Volvos and we are sitting up here and our lights are getting cut off, but we're number one on the charts everywhere. Huh? How does that happen? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So by that time you've seen us, all three of you, you know, Lisa over there like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> we are broke. And I'm like, yeah, girl. You know what I'm saying? So it had to be said. We were over it by that yeah. point. Yeah. We but how do you that. get to that? Like, this is my naivety. I, I don't understand. Is that because you you people were taking you for a ride or the deal that you had done? They just like how contracts. how contracts. It's contracts. The, the deal, always a contract. The deal that we signed, um, we were told was fair. You know what I'm saying? And then you get into the industry and you find out that things aren't even the way you know you were you you know they said it was and the way you're assigned. When we signed our first album, usually when you have success you re-sign and, and, you know, you elevate the numbers and renegotiate. Our numbers didn't change. And then we, you know what I'm saying, had another album. So it just wasn't a good deal. It just wasn't. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. Well, I was reading, I think, and I could this could be wrong because most things on the internet are wrong, but it was something like 56 cents you got out of every album or something, which given how many albums are sold, like that is madness to, to well, think that that... Worth, it was like, more like seven cents, girl. But you know, but the thing is, it's like, it's the, the first time artists agree this. One, you, you're, you're young, you don't know. Of course. Even, time, you know what I'm saying, if you, like the lawyers that we had at the time weren't truly representing us. And yeah, then, it was and a then I'm wondering... I'm wondering if we had fair representation. We didn't because it was no, like, no, no. I said I'm wondering oh, if yeah. we had fair representation. Would we have been able to be in the group because we yeah. hadn't proved ourselves, proven That's ourselves true. yet? You know what I'm saying? So I get that part for two seconds. Once we have proven ourselves, because the first album did great, it was like triple platinum. Then we need to be renegotiating now, and yeah, that, that didn't that happen. Didn't happen. Yeah, and it was a conflict of interest because we found out that the lawyer representing us was roughing our manager, our, our manager, and so the, and the label who too. was the uh, wife of the label um, head. But he, so crazy. Well, we, no, we, he wasn't. He wasn't. Let me correct that. He wasn't representing her. 
but the uh, husband, yeah, you the know, husband. Sam, and they were married. So, <laughs> but, I mean, oh, he like, was a part of the her publishing thing. Yeah, Pebble Tone. Pebble Tone. Yeah, that stood for Pebbles and Antonio. Antonio. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? They tried to say it was something else. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so, so how far so away from the the bed with each other. Yeah, there was an arm here, a leg there, toes. Who's we'll playing Twister? It was too much. Like all the way. You know, Twister. <laughs> all day long. You know what I'm saying? We've heard from so many women over the years say how hard it is, um, even now in 2023, to stand up to some of the labels, to stand up to the men that are running these operations. Were there repercussions for you back then for sticking it to them a bit? Like, did, was there was was that a horrible period afterwards, or was that a time where you felt um, empowered? I guess after you'd done that. No, we never. We didn't feel like that. In fact, we we were like, I'm telling you, I understand. We we, we yeah. had nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? We weren't. Like we didn't have kids or anything like that. We had, it was just us, yeah. and so and that's when we decided to um, <laughs> go up to you know fly, fly to New York, go up to Arista Records because yeah. you know we wanted to talk to the big guy, yeah. which we did, and we you know we did what we, we had could, to do. Yeah, we we, them we, we went gangsta, yeah. and <laughs> gangster, but we they said that we're the closest to, thing to, to rock and roll. Yeah, it was a very you know, rock and roll. We tried to help Arista yes. hostage. Yes. Because when you hear that they generated $175 million and you got 50000 out of that, something, something is wrong. right. Yeah. Oh, so my was, God. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. So Lisa, when she got out the diversion center from burning down the house, they rode up there with all the girls that she was you locked up flew. with. And me and her flew. Yeah, we flew. But they kind of brought things with them. Oh, well, I didn't know about that. Yeah, they did. And um, you know, a couple of guns involved, all women. I swear but I had no their idea rule, and then the little driver had a crush on me, so his job was to just drive take us. all the all the plaques and stuff that we took. So we used to, like go through the whole office. Anything that said TLC, take it. Yeah. And, and I mean we, and we loaded up the um the limo. The limo. With all TLC stuff. So to make a bold <laughs> crazy move like that because Clive Davis called the uh, NYPD on us. Yeah, and, and he lied <laughs> and he said it was like male bodyguards. No, it was no, all, all female. Run it, no, we had and That's no why they guy. have security to this day. That is the absolute best story. That's so gangster. I love it. <laughs> Can you tell me that at some point it turned around for you, that, that, your, that your art then ended up being of some benefit to you financially? They came up with some money. Oh, they definitely even, did. Even though we had to recoup that too. But yeah, at the time, you know, the they shut us up. Yeah, they. I mean, they, they definitely had to, you know, come uh, with it. Because yeah. like I said, it was just... <laughs> first, and then at that time, you got to keep in mind, there was no social media. Can you imagine? Could you? Ooh, oh, ooh. my God. Man, if social media and TMZ was around, man, boy. Yeah, ooh. it would have been, been a hot crazy. mess. Yo, but we did that. That's yeah. the one thing I remember. We was like, "Don't you tell your mama." Don't yeah, you we didn't tell anybody what we were gonna do yeah. until after we did it. <laughs>